Can anybody stop Tare Pogaccia in Catalonia? Maybe the only thing is a police motorbike that he wasn't very happy about near the finish. This was the sixth stage of Catalonia, the queen stage, even though it didn't have the longest climbs. It was the hardest overall stage, a beautiful one featuring a number of climbs between 7 and 15 minutes. But the longest one was actually the Col de Pradel, which is much longer than the others, up to 1,700 meters, and it's got very, very steep pinches in it another two climbs after that about 15 minutes in length and finishing at the monastery in queralt but if you want to get fit to hit the climbs in summer it's not far away you need to download the join cycling app the best adaptive training platform on the market through the link down below you get 30 days free trial no strings attached download join below the sunny weather leaders jersey medium mountain sort of finish coming up for pagacha he was the heavy favorite for the stage and the coverage started before that main climb the colder padel and it was actually visma lisa bike chasing the breakaway which had molimer and hugh carthy and it volta and uh, robert hersing pacing so they obviously wanted to try something either for Koos or Kian Otterbrooks, probably for Koos because he looked the better of the two uh, riders for Visma on GC so far, but they've not had a good week so far on Voltaire and Portenay. They were both uh, lacking, particularly on Voltaire. And Steven Kreisweig begins to up the pace. You see, when the peloton's going this slow, it means that it's seriously steep. When Chavez attacks, it's UAE's responsibility to close that down with Sivakov, Soler, and Groschart and a pacing, and then it kicks up again. The last three Ks, very, very steep rampas in Humanas, and we begin to see Sepp Kuss, the man they were likely pacing for, leaving a gap and looking back, which can mean only one thing, that he obviously wasn't feeling good when Kreisvark was pacing, but the pace continues. Another 200 meters, he slid into the last five wheels of the group, so he's going in one direction and Kreisvark keeps the pace going. There's all the other GC riders in the top 10 still there. It's not like someone of major importance had dropped at this point. In fact, it was Koos that was really the first dropping out of those GC riders. None of them, the others are really under too much pressure. Banal, Mas, Sosa, Landa, Vlasov, Harper, all there. And in fact, Pogaccia, he led it over the top of the climb in the last K or so, and it's about 13%. Uh, just doing his own tempo with Almeida and Soler in the wheel. Erterbrooks also got dropped about a K from the summit. Kreisweig having to bring him back. And UA had it all under control. Uh, three riders, Almeida at the back. He moves back up. They'll have more coming back. Sivakov in the groups behind here, which chases in the valley. And so Soler just goes on the front and keeps everything under control. Not that anybody was going to attack in the valley uh, before the Isidre climb anyway, but you've got a lot of guys here, Bernal, Vlasov, Mas, Harper, Tiberi, all wanting to move up in GC, Landers got a pretty good hold on second, because he's been so good this week already, but there's still two climbs that are hard coming up, steep sections, a lot of the domestiques are dropped, a lot of isolated riders, and it's a hard stage, it's already been a hard pace up to this point. So we get to the uh, Collada de Sant Isidre, 5Ks, 8.5%, very steep sections. And Ivan Sosa, he's back. Mas, he's actually looked good this year, Sosa, in parts. He, he looks like a valuable mountain domestique for Movistar. He hits the front. And it's obviously a serious pace because Pagacha's decided to move up to second wheel. It drops to there. Almeida's struggling seventh, eighth wheel. And Mas is obviously trying to move up in GC into the top five or better. And then Poggy attacks over the top. Bernal initially gapped, actually. You see, he's not in the group with Lenny or Vlasov, who then gets spat. And the last man to go, like all the other mountain stages, is Mikhail Landa, who is best of the rest. But with Poggy going clear, 29Ks to go, still 2Ks to the summit you know, six, seven minutes of climbing. The stage result can only have one outcome, which is Tade Pagacha going up the road, whereas the battle for the podium on GC really gets interesting here. All these riders bar Vlasov are within about 30 seconds of each other from 320 to 350. Vlasov's a bit closer on 250. Uh, Martinez, Mas, Tiberi, Vlasov, and Bernal. And they're playing cat and mouse. They Obviously, they're not going to catch Pagacha. They gave up justifiably and rationally a few stages ago Bernal counter-attacks the group there's Lander in the middle somewhere doing his own pace and no one can follow Egan Bernal Lander maybe 25-30 seconds behind Poggy at the top but Poggy extends it on the descent which was twisty but had some pedaling sections in it as well where Pagacha really extended the gap and now it's a question in this valley got about 12k valley here before uh, the final climb can Vlasov get across to Bernal 
who started the day in ninth, a minute behind Vlasov, but is now threatening his podium GC position. And the group's not cooperating that well because they wouldn't mind attacking Vlasov themselves. So Mas decides to be brave. He goes across. Pogacar looks like he's he's working hard in the valley. He's still got another six, seven Ks to go to Berga where the last climb starts. But Mas, despite the brave effort, despite getting within what well, looks like 15 seconds here, just round the corner from Bernal and Landa. It looked like Bernal got the call on the radio to start pulling hard in that valley, and they really keep Mass behind. And so if he'd gotten across Mass, he probably gets onto the third on the podium. But here's the final climb, 6K, 7%, and Poggy does it easy. Mass loses a lot of time then after the effort in the valley. Bernal and Landa work really, really well. Uh, exchanging turns all the way, both cementing a podium GC position. But here the road starts to narrow. Last 700 metres, all the fans on the road and the police motorbikes get caught. This is kind of like on Jouplin last year and also on Col de la Lose when the car stalled in front of Vingegaard and Pagacha is not happy. He's obviously frustrated being blocked, but also from a safety perspective when you're passing, you probably want to let the let the motorbike know you're on that side so it doesn't veer out and push you into the crowd when it's so narrow when you're passing. So no harm done in the end. Pagaccio wins by about a minute anyway. His third stage at the Volta a Catalunya this year. GC is very far gone for anybody else, but fantastic to see Bernal performing so well. Second on the stage, and also moving up a lot on GC. They were 57 seconds back. Another 117 to the Mask group, who's two seconds out of Harper. They're about tied on GC. Now, here's what Pikachu had to say after the stage. Wow, today was a uh, wow, really hard stage. And uh, yeah, it was... Uh, we controlled from the start pretty good, but then uh, on the long, uh, a special climb, uh, Visma... Lisa bike team uh, tried to set a harder pace and uh, yeah, it was super, super hard on the top. Uh, it only remained 10, 10 riders and we, we were quite well inside with uh, Marc Soler and Joao. So yeah, we set the pace until the bottom next climb and the group came back and uh, yeah, Movistar tried to attack there and and yeah, uh, I just uh, launched there. Um, I saw some people follow, but I say, okay, we go to the top. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, solo to the down and uh, take it uh, with the care and the final climb was uh, really nice with all these people, but uh, I was uh, suffering a lot. But GC, there's still a bit to play for from 4th to 7th tomorrow, there's the Monduic circuit in Barcelona, bonus seconds are up for grabs and there's only 6 seconds between 4th and 7th, so there will be attacks based on today, it looks pretty short that the podium of Pagacha, Landa and Bernal is locked in, so I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll see you the recap of that tomorrow, ciao!